My name is Vivian Sang. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Where is Vivian? Receive greetings from Diani. I am in Leisure Lodge uh, Resort in Diani. I came to Diani on 2nd September. I'll be here all the way up to 7th September. Yesterday, uh, I attended the 26th. 26th Institute of Engineers of Kenya conference, which was opened by the by our uh, Cabinet Secretary for Water, Sanitation and Irrigation, Ms. Uh, Honorable Simon Chelugui. And today I'm going to be presenting a paper. My topic is on the role of engineers in real in using results-based monitoring and evaluation in realizing. Uh, Vision 2030 and the Big Four Agenda. So I will take you through my presentation. Also, I'll tell you the importance of using results-based monitoring and evaluation in all our projects, in our programs, and also how we can realize the Big Four Agenda using results-based monitoring and evaluation. So I'll take you through the, through my day, and I hope you guys, you will learn so much about monitoring and evaluation. See you in a bit. <music> affordable universal health care and affordable housing as the primary areas of focus. And uh, these two development documents, they identify energy as one of the key enablers for sustaining economic growth in Kenya. And you find the flagship projects in the in Vision 2030 and the Big Four Agenda, uh, they've identified energy as the major uh, energy reliant and there are more energy consumers and they are Therefore, they are closely interconnected with energy projects. Um, in a span of 10 years, the installed generation capacity has grown from slightly above 1,000 megawatts in 2008, and uh, as at February 2019, it's at 2,712 megawatts. The peak demand has also grown in a span of 10 years to slightly uh, from 1,000 megawatts in 2008 to 1882 megawatts currently. However, you find these two, these uh, flagship projects in both Vision 2030 and the Big Four Agenda, they define energy. Uh, they are meant to cause a significant high leap in demand for power in the near future. Before Kachako was uh, uh, before Kachako was formed in 2008, you find we had uh, about 3,300 3, kilometers of high voltage transmission uh, you know, transmission lines, and now. As of 2018, we have 5,628 kilometers, and we expect, expect by the year 2030 we'll have reached 11,502 kilometers. It's important for all of us to know uh, to find out what is the status of this uh, Vision 2030 flagship project, because we are 11 years away uh, away to year 2030. Therefore, the urgency to know the status of this flagship project. Um, I've selected a few flagship projects here, but you'll find more on our paper. As the flagship project, the estimated energy that you're supposed to bring, and the projected year of completion, and what is the true status currently? We have the iron and, uh, iron and steel smelting industry in Meru. It was supposed to bring in 315 megawatts. And you're supposed to have been completed between 2015 and 2021, but you find the project has not started and there's no investment confirmed today. We have the Galanu Kulanu irrigation scheme that was uh, the first one was supposed to cover 10,000 acres, 
and uh, phase two was supposed to cover 40,000 acres. It was supposed to have been completed by 2012. But you find phase one currently is, uh, is has not been successful, and phase two is lagging behind. With Bura and Kola irrigation scheme, it was supposed to be completed between 2008 and 2012. Phase two has not started, and the procurement of phase two was terminated. Then we have uh, the special economic zones that are supposed to bring in 50 megawatts and be completed by 2015. But you find currently we have three that have been gazetted and 15 others are at proposed and it's expected to be completed by 2021. And then we have the ICT park that is supposed to bring in for 40 megawatts and be completed by 2012, but you find the project has not started. So I've taken up uh, some two samples. Uh, with what Kechako has done to support this flagship project. With the iron and steel smelting industry in Meru, Kechako has completed Isiolo Meru 132 transmission line uh, in September 2015, and the company plans to bring in a 20 kV Kamburu Maua Isiolo line. And also, we have the Galanu, with the Galanu Pulani irrigation scheme, Kechako has completed. Uh, Rabai Manidi Garse number nine in 2014, and the company plans to bring in a 220 kV Manidi Galana line. But you find the challenges with this irrigation scheme, and even the iron and steel smelting lot have started uh, currently, it's putting uh, Ketrako's uh, 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 challenges with their planning because you find that it becomes difficult to plan for something that has not yet started. So, with this new project that we are planning to bring on board, we, we've, uh, we've, um, we've carried them forward or uh, their construction activities because we're not so sure about these uh, flagship projects. And then it's important to demonstrate meaningful changes and benefits that have been brought by these transmission lines that we've completed. And the first step would be to collect the baseline data before a project has been uh, completed. And the second part would be to collect uh, data during uh, commissioning. And, uh, and then we compare these particular two data, two sets of data that we've collected. We compare with that data that we've, uh, we have picked once the transmission line has been energized. And therefore, we look at, has there been an improvement in the quality of power supply, such as is there reduction in the number of frequency of outages, reduction in the duration, uh, frequencies of outages, reduction in the cost of diesel, the cost of diesel generators as an alternative source of power supply, as well as the reduction in voltage fluctuation that is beyond the accepted limit. Ketrapa has completed 23 projects, but my main focus is going to be on the 220 kV oil carrier, Suswa line in Aki River, in a, the North Center is in Aki River. In my case study, I'm looking at a cement company before we connected them to stable reliable supply. You find me before August 2017, Aki River Town was connected using a long 66 kV line from a Bakasi substation. And this long 66 kV line also served the number of seven factories, steel factories, Aki River, special economic zone, and the general population in the greater Aki River, all the way to Namanga. And you find the financial year 2015-2016, they had instances of a uh, party number of frequencies in power outages. They had in 2016-2017, uh, they had uh, 165 hours and 56 minutes in downtime, which affected their operations uh, and their production. And in one instance in 2017, they had uh, downtime of 57 hours. And after the, they were connected to stable, uh, power supply that was about 0.7 kilometers from uh, at, from uh, the Bakasi substation. We find in one instance their frequency in the number of power outages reduced to four. It went down to about one, and uh, it went down to about one, and we had some instances where it had zero, and the the downtime reduced. Remember we had the. Uh, 57 hours of downtime in one month, and then the it has reduced to about five hours of downtime, went all the way to 2.2, 2.12 hours, and we have instances of several zeros. So it is in, uh, once we have good quality power supply, what is the short-term impact that the company can experience when they have good quality power supply? For this company, they had an increase in quality of finished product because now there is less power interruption. There is reduction in the quality of damaged products due to voltage level fluctuation and outages. And
there is a reduction in production cost because uh, in fact there is no idle manpower, there is no additional cost in uh, maintenance cost because of the whole uh, wear and tear of their machines. And with their long term impacts, they are looking into expanding their plants to purchase a new milling machine, increase in production capacity, setting up of second cylinder factory in a nearby area to support the milling, uh, the milling plant in the river. Uh, so our role Right now, citizens are going to demonstrate that engineers and other professionals will have to show sound judgment of investment. It's not just a matter of explaining kilometers of lines or the that we've done. We have to demonstrate value for money and benefits. And our expectation is for us to monitor both implementation and also demonstrate the benefits of the project. And that's what we talk about uh, resolve based monitoring and evaluation. And just my slide slide there. So my point is that we have to talk about outcomes. And just my slide slide there. So my point is that we have to talk about outcomes in every sector and not outputs. The Japanese Vision 2040 is very clear. They are tracking outcomes. Malaysia, I've been fortunate enough to be able to acquaint myself to their studies, and that is one of the paradigm shifts that we need in this country. So, Chairman, thank you so much. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Vivian Sang. As you can see from the beginning of my video, I was presenting a paper at the 26th Institute of Engineers of Kenya conference. Today I'm going to talk to you more about my the paper that I presented and with me here I have the 26th uh, conference uh, magazine by IEK and the theme of the of the conference was overcoming 21st Century Challenges, Implementing Sustainable Regional and Local Development Agenda and it was held at Leisure Lodge Beach and uh, Golf Resort in Diani and uh, from as 3rd to 6th September 2019 on the Local Development Agenda my paper was focusing on Kenya's Vision 2030 and the Big Four Agenda Kenya Vision 2030 was launched on 28th June 2008 uh, and it was meant to grow and transform Kenya into an industrialized middle income country by the year 2030. Uh, the Big Four Agenda uh, was launched by the Kenyan government that is on uh, 2018 and it was meant to first to fast track Vision 2030 and it focused on areas such as manufacturing, affordable universal healthcare, affordable housing and manufacturing. All this was meant to spur the growth of the Kenya's economy. And uh, on, in this publication, it had uh, various, uh, uh, various papers that were being, um, being uh, presented, day one, day two, day two and day three, because day one, we had the Kenya, the, the Kenya women in, engineers, um, Having, just uh, having their own day to just discuss uh, their issues and um, for me I was presenting on the third day my paper was uh, paper 39 that is on the role of engineers in undertaking results based monitor, uh, monitoring and evaluation for the realization of vision 2030 and the big four agenda I was co-presenting this paper by Dr. Engineer John Moki Amativo, who works in uh, Kenya Electricity Transmission Company and on page 27 this is where my abstract was I am I feel so proud of myself so we have my note session 7 that was on stream 2 and here is my short abstract later on uh, the IK I is, is going to publish uh, full papers of various presenters so I'll be able to show you that and I'm really happy this is my first paper presenting in a conference and it has motivated me to do uh, more papers later in the future yes so I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about uh, what is monitoring and evaluation uh, what is results-based monitoring and evaluation and the importance of implementing results-based monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring. monitoring is a continuous function that uses the systematic collection of data on specified indicators to provide management and the main stakeholders of an ongoing development intervention 
with indicators of the extent of progress and achievement of objectives and progress in the use of allocated funds and uh, monitoring focuses on two levels that is the input and the output um, input refers to what what we can use to do the work and in between input and uh, output we have activities that is what what we do and then we have the output is what we produce or deliver evaluation refers to the systematic and objective assessment of an ongoing or completed project program or policy including its design implementation and results the aim is to determine the relevance and fulfillment of objectives efficiency effectiveness impact and sustainability an evaluation should provide information that is credible useful enabling the incorporations of lessons learned into decision making process of both the recipients and the donors what we consider in evaluation is the outcome and the impact and the outcome is what we wish to achieve and the impact is what we aim to achieve for example with Ketraco they are constructing transmission lines Construct, uh, fin uh, completed transmission line is an output and an, 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 and an outcome is since we have a completed transmission line uh, do we have improvement in the quality of power supply that is uh, is there reduction in the number of frequency of outages is there reduction in the duration of outages is there reduction in the cost of diesel generators as an alternative source of power supply and is there reduction in the voltage fluctuation that is beyond the accepted limit and once once there is improvement on that then now once we have quality power supply what uh, what is the what is the impact and the impact is uh, companies can be able to produce more quality products without power interruptions they are able to there is a reduction in the number of damaged goods as a result of power interruptions there is a reduction in the maintenance cost uh, because previously when there is a power outage there is a lot of wear and tear and also they can um, expand their plant, have more machines uh, being set up then they can be able to produce their products uh, by stretching the hours of production. Yes. Take you through results based monitoring and evaluation. Governments and organizations all over the world are grappling with uh, internal and external demands and pressures for improvements and results in public management. Therefore, they must be increasingly responsible to internal and external stakeholders to demonstrate meaningful results. Therefore, results-based monitoring and evaluation helps in tracking of progress and demonstrating impacts of a given project, program, and policy. It goes beyond the traditional implementation forecast monitoring and evaluation that moves beyond that emphasis of inputs and outputs to a greater focus on outcomes and impacts, focusing on uh, outcomes and impacts and feeding this particular information back into the ongoing processes and govern governing and decision making. On my parting shot, there is power in demonstrating results. If you can demonstrate results, you can win public support therefore it's important for both uh, private and public sector even with the uh, small businesses uh, other institutions schools churches to adopt results based monitoring and evaluation so that they can be able to track progress they can be able to make better decisions and govern better thank you